right, let's start to look at the other four sampling methods we're going to talk about in this class, none of which are SRSs. So we're gonna pick up stratified, clustering, and then a little further down you can see systematic and convenience. So let me read through what stratified means, and then we'll do a couple of examples, okay? So stratified sampling, usually easier and less costly than an SRS. It provides information, excuse me, additional information as well. So when the entire population can be divided into a set of non-overlapping homogeneous subgroups, a method known as stratified sampling often proves easier to implement and more cost-effective than an SRS. In stratified sampling, separate random samples are independently selected from each subgroup, which we call strata. So that sounds a little wonky. Let's see if we can solidify that idea just a little bit. Let's go back to our previous example when we were talking about the college um, that had the private college that had 4,500 students. And here again, I did no grouping ahead of time and I did an SRS of 20. Well, let's say I grouped these students. I broke them down by some characteristic. Um, an easy one to think of is gender. So let's, and I'm making these numbers up, let's just pretend these 4,500 students were 3,000 female and 1,500 male. Okay. So let's pretend I'm gonna group them by gender. So 3,000 female and 1,500 male. So we took my population, I divided them into non-overlapping homogeneous subgroups, all right? And these would be called our strata. So I have a strata of female, a strata of male. If I still want 20 students in my sample at the end of this, let's say I would take about 13 females, and if I needed 20, that would leave me with seven males. That seems about right. If there's if two-thirds of my students are female and one-third is male, then I want about two-thirds of my sample to be female and one-third to be male. And if you're wondering where I'm getting these two-thirds and one-third things, well, not things, they're numbers, if I take 300, or excuse me, 3,000, and I divide it by that 4,500 students, I have about 67% or two-thirds female. If I want that true of my sample, if I multiply that by 20, that means I need 13.33 females. I can't get 13, I'm sorry, I can't get 13.33, but if I truncate that, I could get 13. And then by default, I'd want seven males. So if this is what I want in my sample, right, we had our population here. then what I wanna do is get a little SRS from inside this strata. If I was using my calculator, I would do random int, one comma 3000 comma 13, and make sure I had no repeats. For the males, I would do random int, one comma 3000 comma seven, okay? And that's how I could get my stratified random sample. So again, I broke my population into non-overlapping homogeneous groups that we're gonna call strata. So here's my first strata of female, second strata of male. And I took an SRS inside each of those strata. So you're still using the SRS method, but you've grouped something ahead of time, okay? And I also wanna refer back to this italicized portion and talk about why every group isn't possible which is why stratifying fails to be an SRS. So let me just review this. If you're an SRS, it implies every person or every individual member has the same chance of being selected and every group is possible. All right, so go with me. When I was doing this SRS of 20, is it possible, is it possible that all 20 of these students were female? Yeah, it's possible. It might not be probable, but it's possible. By chance, I could have gotten 20 females. That is a possible group. It's possible that I had 11 males and nine females, or 12 males and eight females. Anything is possible when you're SRSing. Literally, the possibilities are limitless. But when I go over to stratify, is it possible that when I get these 20 students at the end, is it possible I have all females? No, that group is no longer possible. So we start limiting the types of groups 
that could come out at the end, which is why stratifying fails to meet the definition of a simple random sample. There are groups that are no longer possible. The only groups I can get are exactly 13 to 7 in terms of female to male. And when we were talking about this example, I could have had all sorts of possibilities, right? 13 male, 7 female, uh, 10 and 10, 20 and 0, 19 and 1, it, anything was possible. But when you group ahead of time, you start limiting the possibilities that could come out on the back end. All right, so let's take a, a look at a different one. So consider a 10-story college dorm building. We want to know the average amount of money college dorm students spend on food in the dining hall. We could get a list of each student living in the dorm, number them, great, get our random sample and track each kid down for an interview. Or we could divide the floors by uh, the dorms by floors called strata and take an SRS. So let me go ahead and just draw a real cheesy picture here. Okay. Let me make a 10 story dorm. best, not my worst. So we'll call this floor one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. I got 10. Now I want to come in to interview people. Okay. And just for fun, let's say there are about 50 students per floor. So there are 50 students on each of these floors. And, and let's just say, for example, let me write 50 students on every floor except the top floor. Maybe three students have dropped out or something like that. So let's put 47 students up here. Okay. So I wanted to crunch this real, real fast just to see how many students I have in my fake dorm. At this point, I have nine floors of 50 students. And then I have those 47 students left. So I have 497 students total all right and just to review a concept let's say I wanted to get an SRS if I wasn't going to group ahead of time and we will in a moment because they told us we had a 10-story dorm but if I wasn't going to group ahead of time if I wanted um, did it specify how many students should we get didn't specify, let's say we want a random sample of 20. I would do random int 1, 497, and 20. Okay? And I'll put this here. I want our sample size to be 20. Okay? There would be the calculator command if I wanted to do an SRS. All right, but let's, let's pay attention now to this setup that they gave us. They said here, we're gonna go ahead and group folks by dorms. So we're gonna create subgroups, non-overlapping subgroups by the floors. All right, so in this version for stratification, each floor becomes its own strata. So I have 10 stratas in this case, floor one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And things work out nicely numbers-wise. If I want a total of uh, 20 in my sample, I'm just going to take two from each floor. That seems the, the easiest and the fastest to get through this version, or the, the stratifying. So if I want to do the strata version, I'm going to do random int. I want to get a little SRS of my first 50 students. So I want 1, 50, 2. I want two students from this floor, two students from this floor, this floor, this floor, all the way up. I'm gonna to have to change my calculator command a little bit when I get to floor 10 because it doesn't have the 50 students. So I'll repeat for floors one through nine. But on floor 10, I'm gonna do random int one, oops, not 50, I wanna go 47. Okay. And 
if I follow that method, that is going to produce a stratified random sample of 20 students. Now keep in mind, if you did this SRS, is it possible, all right, is it possible when you get done that all 20 of your students came from, from floor one? It's possible. It's not likely, it's very unlikely, but it's possible 20 of your students came from here. It's possible that if you do an SRS of 20, that you leave off floors seven and eight, just by chance, that's possible. Again, any group is possible in an SRS. Anything can happen here. But when you group ahead of time, certain groups are no longer possible on the back end. When I stratify, is it possible anymore that all 20 of my students came from floor one? No, that group is no longer possible. And because it's no longer possible, since every group isn't possible anymore, these stratifying samples fail to meet the definition of an SRS. All right, so so far we got our story, our 10, 10 floor dorm building, we got an SRS, we got a strata. All right, let's take a look at the next method, okay? All right, cluster sampling. Cluster sampling involves dividing the population of interest into non-overlapping heterogeneous subgroups called clusters. Clusters are then selected at random and all individuals in the selected clusters are included in the sample. Okay, so cluster sampling, this is my favorite. Okay? This is the one when I'm actually out in the real world, I cluster. It allows me to go to fewer places. So here's what I mean by that. When you cluster, we're not going to be uh, beholden to this 20, sample size of 20 anymore. So let me rework this and let's cluster this time out. Okay, so if I want to cluster, you choose ahead of time how many, how many floors in this dorm do you want to go to? I'm lazy, I just want to go to one. So what I'm going to do is since I have 10 floors and I only want to go to one of them, I will do random int and I will do one comma 10 comma one and I will see what number pops back out. And just because we're working this, let me pretend I'm gonna do it. So math Oops, excuse me. It looks like floor nine. Okay. So for example, this one came back with floor nine. So what I would do is I would travel up to floor nine and I would survey all students on floor nine. Okay. So it's possible, at least in the, the numbers I've created for this example, it's possible that my, my cluster sample will have 50 students or it might have 47 students if I happen to um, get to go to floor 10. The reason I like this clustering, uh, I only have to go to one floor and I just have to get everybody on that floor and they're all in the same locale, right? They're clustered and these are these non-overlapping groups, so that's awesome. When I'm stratifying, I gotta go to every floor. I'm lazy, that's a lot. When I'm SRSing, I have no idea how many floors I might go to. Might be all, might be one, might be some, but clustering is great. Now you're not limited to just go to one floor. The only reason I picked one floor was because initially we were doing samples of size 20 and I knew that if I went to one floor I'd have at least 50 students and that was, that was even more than I was initially um, projecting. You don't, you don't have to survey all people. Um, the definition of clustering has us do all people but if you wanna to start to create your own, you can cluster and then SRS meaning maybe I went to floor nine and instead of surveying all people and being a true cluster sample, maybe I took my calculator out and just random in 1, 50, 20 and got 20 students here. That would be a combo of those, those two methods, which is fine, okay? Make it your own. Find a way to get the number of folks or number of observations you need in your sample in some sort of random pattern. All right, so we've got that one. All right, systematic. All right, so systematic sampling, it's a procedure that can be used when it's possible to view the population. Oh, I've got a little typo here. To view the population, there we go, of interest 
as consisting of a list or some other sequential arrangement. All right, so we're back at that 10 story dorm room and then we're just gonna pick a random number, say 13, and interview every 13th student. And so if I'm going through this, if I wanna do every 13th student, let's systematically go through this. All right, if I wanna go every 13th student, I'd interview the 13th student, the 26th student, the 39th student, and let's keep adding 13 to these numbers, see where we are. All right, so 13 plus 13. Yep, that's where I got the 26. That's where I got the 39. Looks like we're at 52. 65. Um, I've got to do 20 of these. This will take a little while. I'm just going to get the other 10. All right, so this would be my initial uh, systematic sample of, of 20 students. So here again, I went back to having a sample of 20 students. You could continue to go, right? Because you're only at number 247 and you actually have 497 students hanging out in that dorm. So you could just keep going. You know, the next one would be number 260 and then 273. So you can keep on going until you get close to 497. Uh, for the numbers I made up for this particular problem, I would actually take 497 and divide it by 20 and say, well, let me take every 24th student. That seems um, like a better way to even out or evenly divide out through the floors which students are gonna be in my sample, okay? So we've got that, that's our fourth method. If we go to our last one, all right, we've got the convenience sample and it's, very common, I see it all the time, but it is the worst of the methods. It's not a random sample. It's definitely not a simple random sample. It relies on using an easily available or convenient group to form your sample. And you've probably done this at some point in your career. You had some homework assignment where you had to get a survey or opinions of five people, and you probably asked your five friends or the five people sitting next to you in your class. Or um, a convenient sample I see is those, those folks in the mall that want to talk to you that are in the kiosks, they ask the people sitting that, that walk near their kiosks, right? They're not doing a random sample of the mall. So convenient sampling, it's used all the time, all right? If I was going to do it in the dorm, I'd interview the first 50 students I saw, right? That's the convenient sample. I'm not going out looking for anybody. I'm just saying, okay, hey, you're, you're in my line of sight. Why don't you be part of my sample, okay? All right. So with that, let's just take one more moment before we look at example 11, because typically when students go through these, they're pretty good at identifying an SRS, a systematic or a convenience. And we tend to get confused on the stratification method versus the cluster. Okay. And in stratification versus cluster, they both use groups. You're grouping ahead of time. Your groups here are called strata. Your groups here are called clusters. The difference between the two is that in the stratified method, you take some from each group. I'll say take some from each group. Okay. And in the cluster method, you take entire groups at a time. Okay. 
So stratify, you are breaking into groups, but you're taking some from each group. Clustering, again, breaking into groups, but you're taking entire groups at a time. And we saw that in our dorm example. All right, when we stratified, I, I broke you up by floors, or I broke this dorm up by floors, and I took some from each floor. Right? That was stratifying. For clustering, I broke them up by floors, and I just took everybody on floor nine. And again, I only picked floor nine because that was what popped back out in my, my, random, my random digit selection. All right, so stratifying, some from each group, clustering, whole groups at a time. So we're gonna work some multiple choice questions and we're gonna try and identify these five methods. So this is a very standard question that you'll see on your quizzes and on your midterms. I'll give you a setup, you tell me what's going on. All right, a soccer coach selects six players from a group of boys aged eight to 10, seven players from a group of boys aged 11 to 12, and three players from a group of boys aged 11, excuse me, 13 to 14, to form a recreational soccer team. This is an example of what type of sampling method? All right, so let's think about this. We got a soccer coach. He's getting six players from this group, seven players from this other group, and three players from this, yeah, this third group. So we've got three groups here. So I see group one. All right, we've got the eight to 10 year olds. We've got group two. which is, how old were they? They were 11 to 12 year olds. And last but not least, we got group three, the older kids, we got 13 to 14 year olds. So you can hear that we're grouping ahead of time. As soon as you start to group ahead of time, you are not a simple random sample, okay? And if you're grouping ahead of time, you are not a convenient sample. You're not taking the first 10 kids that showed up to your doorstep. This is not it. And also looking at this language, it doesn't say anything about selecting every kth person, every 13th student or every 13th soccer player, every eighth soccer player. So this is not systematic either. We get down to our favorite two. Was it stratified or clustering? Because again, they both involve groups, but it's what you do with those groups that decides whether you're stratifying or clustering. So we look at this, we got three groups. If I stratified, it meant I took some from each group. If I clustered, it meant I took an entire group. So let's look at the setup. Did this soccer coach take some from each group or did he or she just take one group at a time, one entire group or maybe two entire groups? So a soccer coach selects six players from this group. All right, so I got six players from this group. I got seven players from the middle-aged kids and then I got three players from the older aged kids. So I took some from each group. Right, and when we take some from each, we are stratifying. 